Hi, this is Mike Stevenson. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use BizTalk server to send messages to an Azure Event Hub. So let's jump in straight away and we'll take a look at our um, Azure subscription here where we have, um, we've got set up a service bus namespace and I've created a, an event hub here called BizTalk Events. I've also configured um, some security for this. So we've got the, the default root managed access key. We've also got the BizTalk um, SAS policy, which only has the send permission. And you can see down here, I've got, um, you know, I've got credentials set up for those guys. So what we're gonna do is um, in Service Bus Explorer, I'm gonna show you here the, the view of connecting to that Service Bus namespace. So what we can do if we go into the event hub and then find the default consumer group, we can create a listener on that group and we'll use this to see our events coming in. Now, if we start that off, you'll see down at the bottom here. So if I, if I just minimize this slightly. You'll see down the bottom here. Um, so our, our listeners kind of kicked off its... Um, pulled in a few events that were already on the event hub from uh, when I was testing this another, another time. So you can see here, it's now sitting waiting for an event to come in. Now, what we need to do next is figure out how do we actually make BizTalk send a message to the event hub. So we need the details from the, um, the BizTalk SAS policy. We also need to know the name of our service bus um, namespace, and we need to know the name of our event hub. You can see here now if we jump over to our BizTalk machine on this BizTalk machine um, I've got a little tool called the Event Hub Signature Generator which I'll include a link um, on the blog post to get this and this is created by um, Sandrino who's one of the other um, community guys who does some great stuff around Service Bus and what you can see here is that um, I've populated some details about my Service Bus um, instance so I've got my namespace my event hub name I've specified my publisher is going to be BizTalk I'm going to choose to use AM, uh, sorry HTTP as the mode um, and then I've got my sender key sender name and what I've done here is I've picked a really long value as the, as the time to live for the token so effectively that means that token is going to be valid for years and years and years so I can kind of just just have a a key that I can keep in my configuration that I don't have to worry about changing all the time. So when I generate that, I'll get this big long string down at the bottom here, which we can put in an authorization header to send a message to service uh, to event hubs over HTTP. So the next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to keep this demo really simple. So we're going to receive a message from a file. So I've created a file receive location here. And the message we're going to receive is this um, little scrap of JSON, which um, you can see here, there's nothing nothing interesting about that, just a very vanilla piece of JSON. Um, BizTalk's going to pick a file up from a folder, and then it's going to route it to this send port here. Now, I've chosen to use the WCF Web HTTP binding, and if we have a look at how I've configured this, so I've got my address for my service bus namespace um, and then I've got the event hub name on the end of that. Now, just one interesting bit, if you see people doing examples of sending to event hub over HTTP, you often see them specify publishers and then the name of the publisher, which I, in this case I've chosen BizTalk. Now, from the perspective of your, um, of your um, token, that that name in the um, in the URL needs to match this publisher here. Otherwise, you'll get you'll get kind of an error back, and you're talking about not being authorized. So, I've specified my HTTP method as post. Next, I've um, left the binding defaults the same, but on the security tab, I've chosen transport security because it's going to be an HTTPS protocol but I've specified the client credential type as none. On the behavior section, there's no special behaviors here, no special proxy settings, but on the message, the, the key bit I've added is I've added this authorization header. So 
specified the kind of key for it there and then the value from the token generator tool has basically gone on on the end of that header so what happens here is when the adapter sends my message it's going to attach that HTTP header to the request that I'm going to send to service bus event hubs so as you can see that config is pretty simple I've got um, the default send handler here I'm using a pass-through pipeline because in this case I'm sending an JSON message. In the real world, it's quite likely that you might want to have a custom pipeline in there with a JSON converter. So you could send an XML message from BizTalk that gets converted to JSON as it's sent to Event Hub. Um, I have my um, BizTalk port filter, as you'd expect, just listening for messages coming in. So what we're going to do next then is um, a kind of typical biz talk demo now where I'm just going to shrink that down a bit so you can see the event hub and if we um, shrink the folder down as well so if we copy this sorry just had to juggle the windows there I forgot that the um, Service Bus Explorer was on the desktop, not, not the VM. So if we copy our JSON scrap here, pop that in the folder, BizTalk picks it up, and straight away you'd saw our Event Hub listener detected a new message on the event uh, on the hub here. You can see there's some details about our Event Hub. So if we copy a whole bunch of these messages, drop them in and you can see BizTalk push those really quickly through to the event hub. So hopefully that's a really simple video that shows that in you know next to no time you can configure the BizTalk WCF web HTTP adapter um, to send messages to an Azure event hub which I think is pretty cool.